All right, all right, all right. Let's go, everybody. We've got Saril in the top left side of the map playing a Zerg versus Protoss. He is up against Classic. And Classic has been looking amazing in PvZ lately, playing his own unique style. He actually had pretty competitive matches with Saril uh, back in Sweden, but this here is played at Gamers 8. It's a best of three in the Swiss stage. And I'm fascinated to see how Classics adapted his style because he played excellent StarCraft, but I think his strategies will just never work against someone as good as Serral. Uh, he was doing a lot of Colossus Blink Stalker pushes, which can beat a lesser Zerg, but it, it just feels like Serral never loses to Colossus Stalker play. So I'd like to see Classic try something a bit different, go back to the drawing board and show us why he is at the cutting edge of ZVP right now. And he truly has been. Um, Hero... I would say has more dynamic openings that often get him ahead more than classic. The problem is that Hero has uh, been consistently kind of throwing those advantages away a little bit in this matchup specifically, and that's been hurting Hero's performances in tournaments. He's just getting ahead and then losing PVZ after PVZ after PVZ, and uh, it's kind of unfortunate. Like the number of games he's up 30, 40 supply on Dark and then loses, and you're not meant to be losing from up and supply on a on a Zerg player when you're Protoss, but. Somehow Classic uh, Hero does find a way. Classic, I do not expect to be letting an advantage like that slip away ever. So we'll see if he can uh, show some next level play. It does look like a Stargate opening. You can see Warp Gate's not starting and Stargate does go down right on time, 218. Serral doing a very standard 16 hatchery this game going link speed. And Serral has looked, he looked unstoppable in Sweden uh, when he 3 0 Classic. He looked unstoppable a bunch of times recently to be fair, but uh, Rainer did manage to take him out at, uh, was it Home Story Cup, where Rainer had really leveled up and he looked like he was on another level. It was the Rainer that can't be stopped, the mythical Rainer that comes out once in a blue moon and just is, uh, is ridiculous. That being said, just a very standard opening on Babylon, small map, third queen starts up here. Actually, that should be a fourth queen, shouldn't it? Oh, that's interesting. Third queen on 33 supply after Overlord, okay. Oh, Link Scout gets in, sees the Oracle starting. Nice. No secrets here, no surprises. The Adept just poking in, poking out. Not risking committing against three Zerglings and a Queen. Zergling in the main, wasting a little bit of Classic's time, trying to get some more scouting, just making sure the Oracle doesn't get cancelled, and also stopping Classic from going across to double Adept pressure. If there was two Adepts on this side of the map, Sarah would need to be going up to eight Zerglings already. Instead, he gets to squeeze out a few more drones and just work forwards. All right, Oracle's moving forward. Adept does shade back into the wall. We've got two gates there, Stargate in the main. Okay, Oracle's gonna move down to the left side. Okay, we've already got a Spork Roller going up in the main base as well. Two Oracles coming out, third Oracle's on the way, Overlord moving south. These two Oracles going to try and group up on that left side. How can you tell what's building out of a Stargate? You can see the shape of it there. It takes a little bit of practice, I know newer players aren't too familiar with the shapes, but like a Void Ray and a Phoenix are both very, very distinctive. The Oracle's probably the least distinctive, but you can tell it's an Oracle because it's not a Phoenix or a Void Ray. Uh, we can actually tell the difference between the two, but um, yeah, if you aren't as used to it, you'll you'll start to figure out the pointy bits that stick out from the Phoenix and the Void Ray. So it's just kind of a cute kind of unique feature of that structure. Third Oracle coming across, Serral's finding, like Serral's just taking zero damage so far. This should be really good for him, but economically classic, still even in workers. Serral's only just getting ahead now. So Serral's built six queens, he's built two spores, he's played pretty safe. Keep in mind, there's no spore crawler in the third base. So the queens do need to be very careful there. Oracle's gonna come back in here, but queens are well positioned. And if your queens instantly focus the stasis trap, it doesn't get a chance to finish, as you see. As long as two queens are shooting it at once. Oracle steers around, gets out of there. And uh, meanwhile, there is an Oracle guarding the third base. Blinken plus one is on the way. Four more gateways coming in. Six gate blink with plus one. I don't know if this is the best way to play against Serral in terms of massing stalkers, but I think opening blink is always very safe, right? It keeps you safe against a lot of Zerg attacks. Six gate blink is fine, but I like that he's going fifth gas. He's getting a robo. He's showing signs of wanting to tech up and not just do, uh, oh, let me make blink stalkers and zealots and try to swarm you. Serral is amazing at stopping those styles, so... 
Good to see Classic still kind of middle of the road. It's not trying to force anything too gimmicky to happen. Plus one melee is on the way for Serral. He's also got a lair finished at a pretty damn good time. It's going to allow him to overseer scout when he feels like it. Depth's cleaning up a Zergling on the right side, both sides. So far, really just skirmishing for map control. The worker count's been dead even. We can see it's very evenly matched. Cannon in the third base does go up here for Classic. Still no Overseer Scout. There we go. It is morphing. Overseer is going to pop out. Go for a scout of that main base. And let's see if Serral reacts in any way. I'm going to go to actually Serral's camera right now, guys. So we can see when he looks at that Overseer. He actually catches a probe going to the fourth. Very nicely done. Drops a changeling in the main base. You can see he's clicking. He sees a second forge. Very good scout timing. Serral sees a second forge. We're going to stop off his camera because it's a little frantic. And he's already going up to five bases. Rather than building a macro hatchery, he'd rather have five mineral lines open that he can use. And ooh, the adepts do shade forward as the ling split up and get surrounded. Not a single roach has been built yet this game, which is fantastic. If you know they're going stalkers, just lings and drones is the way to do it. 83 drones? Okay, Serral. Put your economy away, man. Holster that. That's ridiculous. That's, that's disgusting. No Protoss wants to see a Zerg at 83 drones before the seven minute mark. That being said, second Robo, Robo Bay, Templar Archives, all these things are on the way for Classic. So I imagine it's going to be the uh, mostly Zealot Archon Disruptor mid game. Notice he's only built nine Stalkers. He's not over committing to Stalkers, which is what we love to see. Instead saying, let's get upgrades, let's get high-tech units, let's get the things that are actually good. The Oracle's also saved a lot of energy. Ooh, gonna take out a few of these roaches, not bad for Classic. Does revelate, cleans up a creep chamber before backing away from the Queens. Overlord speed and Baneling speed are on the way. Infestation pit also about halfway done for Serral. Looks like the pervy boy overseer does get forced to hide in the back of the base. Alright, Oracle's trying to hang out at the front. But 2 1 upgrades on the way. Extra gate does go down there. Plus 2 melee is coming in. Overlord does get sniped at the front. Okay, Ling Roach is going to move in from there. Fourth base coming up with the gas. A Psy Storm as well. Wow, Classic's getting everything. It's interesting he's opening Colossi. I wasn't expecting that. I don't mind two. I think he should go Disruptors after two, though. He's actually building a third Colossus. What a bizarre style. Four Colossus? And Serral's going to try and push. It's a massive Roach Ravager push. Serral does not want to overcomplicate things. He says, I have Baneling Speed. I have Mass Roach Ling Bane Ravager. Let's just go for it. Stasis Trap's trying to spread. Classic is on an equal work account, but he's way down in army supply, but it is a higher quality army supply. Nonetheless, this is going to be very hard to defend. This is going to be very, very difficult. Here we go. Roachling Bane coming in from all sides. Oh my lord. Okay. Queens are on the left. They're a little exposed. Those could get cleaned up. One of the queens already goes down. Bit of a mistake there for Serral. He's lost his anti-air. And now the oracles are focusing down the ravages. Serral has to go. His ravages are on a timed life. Colossus on the top right is a little exposed. Stalker's blinking back. Nice stasis trap on the banelings of the battery overcharge. One of the colossi goes down. This colossus does fall back. The stalker's in a very good position. Oh man, that's a lot of banelings though. That's a lot of banelings. Stalker holding the line. Holds back the banelings. The mineral line's still up. More stalkers warping in. Two colossus walk down from the natural ramp. That is a hold and a miraculous hold at that. That was a massive number of Zerg units. These Banelings are going to take out two Stalkers on the way out. And uh, that there is redonkulous, mate. That was very well done by Classic. He holds 3,000 resources advantage in the units lost. And he's going to 3-2 upgrades. Meanwhile, Serral, the single Evo Chamber boy that he is, is not going to be happy. When you're playing against a double upgrade Protoss and they trade that well in their first fight, when you don't damage their economy... You have to realize as a Zerg, these Roaches and Ravages aren't getting any better. They have no upgrades on the way. There's no Hive. Serral is going to need a good fight. Now, the hope here for him is that Classic keeps making Stalkers. Because um, those units are kind of... Uh, fart, fart tier. If he makes more Immortals and Archons, it doesn't matter how much Ling Bane you have. It, it's not going to be able to break through a big ball of Colossus Immortal Archon. Stalker's trying to hold on against the next wave. I guess this is why he went for the Stalkers. He just wanted units to reinforce. The battery overcharge and the Colossus on the right looking very good. The Stalkers do blink back finally. Baneling's on the right side. But Classic quick to evacuate. And he does keep most of those probes alive. Only losing eight of them, which is not too bad at all. 4,000 resources ahead and the units lost. Classic is now... Oh, wait, wait! He went back! Oh, no! He went back with his probes! He lost 18. He'd only lost eight. He went back and lost 10 more. That's a big doo-doo. Classic needs to replace those probes. 
He's not choosing to... Wait, is Classic just going to go for a counterattack? I don't think that's the right play. I think he's got to wait for 3-2, and that's still a minute, even 70 seconds out. Interesting that he's only building probes one at a time. I thought he would just instantly hold down the probe count all for next side. Up to two Immortals and an Archon, soon to be three Archons and four Immortals with the four Colossi behind it. That's an army that Ravagerling Bane does not want to engage against. Ooh, Baneling drop coming in from the south. Serral's going to do what he can. Oh man. Okay, here we go. Ling Bane, Roach Ravager coming forwards. Wall of Cannon Battery not going to be able to hold on against such numbers, but the army is coming in. Looks like he's going to back off, try to slide some Banelings in the middle line. Banelings dropped here! Ooh, and he also did force Classic to evacuate that middle line. He even saves a Baneling. He's going to try and drop that and run it into the natural, I would imagine. Oh, watch out, watch out, Classic! Oh no, Classic! Another three or four probes go down. Good reactions, uh, considering the stress he's under for Classic, but he's down to 49 workers, and... With a 40 worker advantage, I think Serral's able now to transition. He goes to Hive. He's slowly adding upgrades on the Evo Chamber as well. That being said, it's going to be 3-2 upgrades for Protoss. 4 Archon, 6 Immortals, 4 Colossus, 16 Stalkers, 3 Oracles. Can you really beat this? I really... I, I don't know. I don't know if you can beat that, mate. That's so scary. I mean, one or two more rounds of Archons warping in. I don't know if Ravageling Bane can deal with it. That being said, there are 60 Banelings. But no Ravages, just Roaches. 17 Roaches, 70 Zerglings, and about to be 75 Banelings in a moment. This is a hard to push on creep, though. Serral's going to need to set up a big surround when this push comes. Classic's looking like he wants to go all in. He built a few probes, but not too many. I think he's saying, hey, my army's giant. You won't be able to stop this. Nice spread from Classic. Serral comes in, but the army is so well spread right now. The front units do get surrounded by the Ling Roach. The Banelings rolling towards that army. The Colossus falling back. The Archons, the Immortals doing what they can. Serral does wash up on that army. He cleanses some of the important units. There's still three Colossus and three Archons standing. That is definitely a, a weird position to be in because with Serral's income advantage, he's like, I can trade like that all day. On the other hand, you know what? He might be right. A lot of Stalkers keep getting reinforced. I really feel like Classic needs... Uh, just Archons, Immortals, and Colossi building. But it seems like it's pure stalk on, Stalker Archon now. I don't know if that's going to get it done. It's like a Zealot warping in on that base with the help of the battery buying a bit of time. Maybe he'll get some work. Classic does take out two base attempts. Well, one actual base and one base attempt on the bottom. Looks like the Zealot's defending for now, but more Zerglings coming in. Going to need a warp in or a recall to stay solid there. And it looks like Serral will be backing away right now. Ling Bane Roach going to be chilling out for a little bit. Going to go for a bit of a surroundy surround, but he does back off. Adrenal glands, plus three melee, and 18 Zerglings are building right now. Still just staying on this army. No Vipers? No Broodlords? Serral has faith in Ravager Ling Bane. I don't know if I feel the same way. I really feel like if this was Showtime, he'd be going mass, mass Archon. I think these Stalker Warpins are such a waste of gas. I, I really don't know if the Stalkers make any sense right now. That being said, I've seen Classic do some crazy Stalker backstabs in the past where he just finds value and harassment with them. Oh, he needs to get back to the rocks. Get back to the rocks, Classic. Oh, a little slow. He does leave three Stalkers behind. A little awkward on the retreat there. Uh, more Stalkers are warping in. And that is, I think, an issue. Yeah, because he's so gas-starved. I'd like to see a few Zealots mixed into backstabs to try to lure the Ling Bane away in, in small squads, find ways to dump the minerals, and then just keep growing that Archon Immortal count. There's two Immortals building now, nine Archons with three Colossi, three two upgrades. A big unfortunate thing is now coming to the fore, though. Archons don't benefit from armor upgrades, and that's maybe why he's so Stalker-focused. I really think he should have swapped to Plasma Shields after, maybe even immediately, but definitely after plus one armor. Not having any Plasma Shields and even opting for plus three armor that's a big mistake for Classic. Plasma Shields is absolutely crucial for Archons against Ling Bane. Even Banelings don't do that much damage versus non-light units. 20 damage, even then, knocking one or two points off that damage does stack up in value when you're talking about a hit point with 350 shields. Ling's coming in at the bottom. Oh, he's going to get a deny on Classic's fifth. Classic's stuck on four base. Serral's starting to bank up. This has been a pretty action-packed game, but I do feel like Serral's just massive income advantage might be a bit much. On the other hand, it feels like Serral's waiting for Classic to all-in. He's like, you have to all-in now. And Classic's like, 
Yeah, but I'm not going to. I'm going to wait till I make an ultimate maxed out army. Look at that. He kills a Stalker to warp in another Archon here. That's what these two High Templar are for. Hopefully he remembers to do it. Ten Archons, three Colossi, an Immortal. A fourth Colossi is about to pop out and rally to the front as well. A few Oracles overhead. Stasis Traps could be amazing. He does have Psy Storm coming in. Oh, he's actually going to try and use Psy Storm. He doesn't have it available just yet. Oh my gosh, she needs Psy Storm. Dude, this army... I'm sorry, guys. I'm realizing... Recording in 4K on my computer while streaming and having all my other software running is not going to... Maybe the best idea. Maybe I should have turned one of my settings down a little bit because I was not expecting to have 100 Banelings on the screen. And when you've got a ton of creep on the map and 100 Banelings on the screen with all the physics turned on and everything, we're probably going to... I can see the frame rates dropping a fair bit in game. So I apologize for that one, guys. It's a uh, Starcross and older game, so it is what it is. Link's coming and run into this. Hopefully it's not too freeze frame. As long as we don't go full PowerPoint slide, I'll be happy. But these big fights are going to be a little bit of a mess, man. Oh, Serral set up a surround. Look at that surround, guys. Look at that surround. Ling Bane coming in. He's going to get, get a giant surround on this army. He's trying to go lurkers behind this. Bane Lings! Big Sty Storm comes in, starts zoning those units out. Beautiful stasis trap spready here from Classic. The Bane Lings try to get in on top. And somehow, so much of that army of Protoss goes down. But does it really? Two more Colossi building behind it. A bunch of Banelings there. If you can kill this base, kill some of these units, and then pull back and remax, I think this is amazing for Classic. Units lost up. He's up 8,000 resources. Those Banelings actually managed to escape. Well done by Serral there. He's going to try and run away. He's going for round two. Careful, Classic. Careful. Classic was not expecting the remax this quickly, but because Serral kept a bunch of the Banelings alive, he's able to go in one more time. These units are a bit too spread out. They're getting surrounded individually, and that was a good trade for Serral. He got rid of a lot of important units, didn't throw away the core of his army, and he pulls it back. But Serral's income sucks. He's just lost a bunch of important bases. He's got a new hatchery here. He needs to transfer drones, but he just doesn't have that many minerals available anymore after losing those bases. That being said, Classic's economy does suck as well. He's going to recall a bunch of probes, start fully mining off that fifth base, and that does keep the mineral income surprisingly similar for this stage of the game. Serral going in for an attack, but he might be overextending. The Oracles are a little low on energy right now, but not worth the risk of getting taken out. Vipers and Lurkers on the way for Serral. Plus two range coming in as well. He's got plus three melee already ready. Two Banelings roll in, denying the mining time very effectively. Just going to need to send a Zealot or a Stalker down there to deal with that. And Classic indeed does just that. That Stalker will clean up the base of those Banelings and the probes go back to mine. Three Hydras building to finish the max out. Looks like more and more Lurkers and Vipers. I am surprised Serral didn't go Broodlords in this game. But I think just fundamentally he feels if the opponent has well upgraded Blink Stalkers, Broodlords are going to die to them way too easily. Especially because you don't really have any air upgrades. He's got amazing Stalker upgrades with 3-3. But uh, I've got to definitely feel like the lack of Plasma Shields upgrades has been a big issue for Classic in this game. Ooh, big fight for Classic! He cleanses the Lurker line. Here come the Vipers, come forward. But the Lurker line just gets absolutely wrecked. Serral should not have been out in this big wide open area. He should have been hiding behind a choke point with those lurkers. Instead, they go down. The Banelings, the Lings, and the Ravagers not really able to support them. He does have a few Vipers, but he needs to get some abducts off on these big power units. He's going to try and attack the bottom. Artosis! There was an Artosis pylon powering nine cannons and two shield batteries. Classic. Oh, he drops his trousers in the woods, thinks he's safe to do a poo. Doesn't realize Serral comes up and just kicks him over into his own poo hole that he just dug. That was a very bad pylon. Luckily, it wasn't the end of the world because he has so many workers and not that many bases. He can just transfer new workers there. But definitely hurts if he was to take a sixth base in the near future. And uh, got to make sure you have those backup pylons on those expansions, guys. Zealot's trying to warp in right now. The battery and the cannon's going to struggle. There's a plus three adrenal gland zerglings. Recall is almost ready, but not quite. Oh, God. Serral's Ling Run Bays are getting out of hand. Recall is now technically available. Probe's already starting to fall. The Zealots will buy a bit of time, but that base is going to go down. If he clicks it, that base falls. All he needs to do is target it with the Zerglings. Luckily for Classic, Serral's a bit occupied in the bottom left, but he's catching Stalkers, so I think he's okay with that. A few of the Stalkers do blink away. The Nexus somehow survives. A few Oracles left there. Classic pulling his army back to the bottom left. Um, Ooh-wee. Okie doke. All right, what do we got, guys? Zealot in the top right. Gonna be getting taken out by those Zerglings. The Lurker does get taken out there as well. Trying to push forward as Classic. He's got a big 136 supply army, but... Oh, man, he's left that base. That base is gonna go down. 
He's happy right now, apparently, to say, no, 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 let's not let Cyril get to the late game. I'll sacrifice the base as long as I don't lose the core. Don't let those links in your base, man. Oh, God, he's supply blocked. Oh, God, he's supply blocked. Luckily, he does pull a pro back and walls off there. But uh, his wall off will go down pretty quickly if he's not careful. Recall is available. He may end up needing to use this. Plus three adrenal gland zerglings. Uh, we call them cracklings, guys, for two reasons. Uh, obviously, if you're into military history, it's because crack troops are. It's a term for elite soldiers, the best of the best, the Royal Guard, the, the, the Green Berets, the Navy SEALs. Um, or the other uh, way we call it is if you're into drugs, we all know that if you do crack, you suddenly get a big burst of energy and just feel like running around and doing things really well. So it's, uh, whichever definition you prefer there. Uh, Stalker Immortal High Templar Arcrod Army is still very scary. You catch those lurkers uh, unburrowed. They're going to go down very fast. Whoa! He's going to shove it! Classic is going to just send it! Goes in and tries to break the lurker line. The Roach Baneling tries to run forward, but they can't tank for crap against that line of Protoss. A gigantic battle line of Protoss. Still a big backing of High Templar and Colossi. A few more lurkers get a few scary volleys, but they start getting roasted. Several counterattacks and takes out Classic's last economy. He's only got a couple of minerals there, and that's it. Now all Cyril needs to do is pull his army back and kill this. <laughs> all he needs to do is kill that. That there is a three Immortals, four Colossi, four High Templar, jacked up with Storm, a bunch of Zealots, which, by the way, tactically don't have charge, guys. This is what we call tactical no-charge Zealots to make sure they don't run ahead and die. So they, so they tank. Their job is not to attack, their job is to tank. Obviously, he forgot that upgrade, but it is what it is. Um, yes, yeah, Serral's got Vipers, though. Okay, so Vipers, if he can abduct a few big units and get, like, 10 Lurkers, I maybe believe. Keep in mind, he has no Carapace against plus 3 armor for the uh, the Protoss, so those Lurkers are pretty fragile. He's only got one base going up in the bottom left. To be fair, Classic has no economy. Classic does need to keep going. I actually think Classic should just keep going. The longer he gives Serral, the more lurkers Serral gets, the bigger problem that is. Because, like, look at this. He's got he's got a bit of gas. He can make, like, four or five more lurkers if he's given time. As that lurker count grows, you're in trouble. Classic spending his last money on more immortals. Great abduct. Grabs an oracle. Serral already adapting to this very low economy situation and says, yep, I know what I know what situation this is. I'd like to see Classic split and come from two sides if he wants to break a lurker positioning. Serral quickly repositions right now. Classic should keep staying aggressive, though, but he doesn't know about this bottom left base. And it's not a crazy amount of minerals, but it's still a few thousand. And a few thousand when you're mining literally nothing. 55 minerals and now long distance mining. It's a lot. Classic has to go right here right now. Classic has shown a bit of shakiness in base trades uh, recently. In, in, in kind of these situations where he lets players who are a bit more experienced over the last few years of wild base trades uh, sometimes get back in it. I'm, I'm hoping that isn't what happens here because I do feel he has the better army when it comes to busting through. But Serral, he's up there. Serral's a bit in the open right now. Bit of a risky position. Always oh, looking for the abducts, but the Stalkers blink forward. Oh, he goes after the Vipers. That was a very delayed call by Classic to go for that. Loses a few Stalkers for free. Luckily for him, there's no Overseer, so his Observer sees everything. Oh, great initiate with the Storm. As long as he doesn't lose any of those Immortals. Great Storm! Oh, but an abduct comes in. Does kill one of these Immortals, but the Vipers are out of energy. So now it's go time. There's no blinding clouds. The lurkers aren't even burrowed right now. I think it might be go time for Classic, but he's got to spread before he takes this fight. You do not want to go in in a ball. His immortals should be spread out in a big line. He's trying to use his Colossi to start the fight. The immortals in the storm come in. He breaks the southern line of Serral's army. He's up 20 army supply. Classic knows victories within his grasp. The 3-3 three, three elite Protoss units want to drive the nail home right now. He wants to get Serral up on that bloody crucifix, and he, he does. He nails him through. Smashes him up, and uh, at this point, Serral's got nothing left. A few lings and roaches. There's nothing he can do. Great play by Classic this game. Even when he took a few of those big hits, these Colossi anchoring his army. 103 kills, 50 kills, 35 kills, and 56 kills. That is an elite select set of Colossi. They have been there for a long time in this game. He's lost four Colossi this game, so this is probably the second group of four. But they did some crazy damage, man. I feel like even though it was not that high impact early on, and I was like, I don't like Colossi as much against Roaches. Um, yeah, if you make the game go long enough and you're good at spreading and protecting the Colossus, they actually work really, really well. Um, what I like about it is it wasn't just a big three base Colossus stalker all in. Serral knows he's out. He's got to tap out. But just to finish that thought, it wasn't a big three base all in. 
it was a little bit more macro use the colossus for consistent value across many periods of the game only thing i'd criticize is the lack of plasma shields otherwise an amazing game one for classic we've got classic in the bottom right Cyril in the top left third intro does it and Cyril's gonna go 16 hatch again no 15 hatches and i think it's because classic's not really inclined to pylon block so Cyril, as always studying his opponents coming in well prepared um he played pretty good did Cyril, but let's be real i think he had time to go to brood lords on the other hand, Broodlord Transition is very tentative against those Blink Stalker styles, because they can blink underneath, but uh, Lurkers gets you there to some sort of ground-pounding army a little quicker. The problem you run into is the Roach Bane is not really a tanky army, right? It doesn't, it doesn't hold down that well underneath uh, in front of the Lurkers for tanking, and it, it kind of feels like you need to just really get that Lurker count very, very high to deal with the Protoss Force. Anyways... Classic. Um, I was surprised he didn't reprobe after he lost so many workers. And I think that was just a tactical choice for him to say, eh, let's let the Zerg constantly just throw cheap armies at me inefficiently. And I, I will lose probes here and there, but then I'm going to have such a big army I can go kill you. I uh, I would love to see plasma shields with that style because I always feel this, you know, this Ravageling Bane style just sucks versus Archons. We saw Classic build like 20 Archons in that game. They never had any armor upgrades, any shield upgrades, that is. So, uh, personally, I'd probably go plus one armor for the Stalkers, then start Plasma Shields. And if you can get to, say, plus two Plasma Shields, 10, 12 Archons, the Lingbane Rope Ravager's going to have a hard time. Another point Twitch chat was pointing out. There's a high-level player in chat called Zayad, so shout out to him. I believe he was the one who brought it up. And he was saying, you know, having no armor upgrades really hurts you in these long ground games. Because the Colossi were such a big part of that game, and they do two attacks. And you've got plus three, so it's like, okay, cool, you're getting plus six damage. None of that's getting negated. If you have plus three carapace, it completely negates that plus six damage, right, from the Colossi each, each time it shoots. But there was no armor upgrades for Serral, and that's fine in the short term. But I remember when his first attack didn't really do any economic damage, and I said, oh, he's in trouble, because he's playing single Evo Chamber versus Double Forge. And I really think that stacked up in the long in the long term. So a lot of people will kind of they'll point out, okay, Carapace is not that good versus Protoss. And it's not, it's not. But in a long enough game with lots of ground armies fighting, it becomes very valuable over time. Anytime you've got just zealots or stalkers fighting roaches, or anytime you've got Colossi just constantly hitting lings. The lings not so much, but mostly the Bane Lings, the Ravages, the Roaches. Getting all that extra damage, it adds up over time. So I do think the longer that game went, and with Serral making like 100 Banelings at one point, he probably should have added those upgrades. Missing those upgrades, definitely something that hurt him in the long term. So I think both sides missing a few upgrades uh, for such a long ground game. On the other hand, you probably don't expect the game to drag out as long as it does with just ground armies smashing into each other. But that's my favorite sort of PvZ where neither player goes Skytoss or Broodlord in Festa, and it really just stays at a very fun stage of the matchup. So far, no damage coming in because it's Serral, and Serral taking damage is uh, usually a sign that the end days are nigh. Basically, you guys see Serral lose three drones to two Adepts. Basically, go find your loved ones. Um, you know, make sure you admit to any guilty, guilty things. Maybe you murdered someone once. You're like, oh, I've been holding this secret in my whole life. Basically, you know, you gotta, you got to seal, you know, you fi finish your business on this earth because you're not going to be here much longer. None of us will. Um, that being said, Serral plays so safe. Hold on, hold on. Oracle dive. Four queens well positioned. He gets three drones, but the Oracle's almost dead. So that's totally fine for Serral, I think. And uh, very well handled so far. Ling still tracking the Adepts. Forge and Twilight is on the way there as well. <laughs> Joke's on you, pig. I have no loved ones. That's a funny. Nice. <laughs> you know, and like, I'd, I'd still just be hanging out with stuff. I'd just play StarCraft. The world's about to end. We're just going to hop on the ladder, hang out in the, th hang, hang out watching some StarCraft videos because that's what we, that's our only true love. StarCraft Virgins Unite. Let's go. Oh, nice Evo Chamber save. Oh, Serral's so good. Serral's so good. Serral's so good. Hmm. Oh, 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 watch out, Classic. Oh my gosh, he barely gets it out again. 
Now he's got two oracles deep in the red, so his harassment's pretty much done at this point. Only four drones and an overlord and a few tumors going down. That being said, Classic's economy management has been flawless. Notice he's very low on gateway units, just a couple of adepts and a stalker. So as much as he hasn't found much damage, he's also been able to be greedy himself. And he's going to go straight Templar Archive, so it looks like we might see a Stalker Storm style. Usually with that style, you're looking to go for a fast... Um, six gateways already as well? Okay. Usually you're going for a fast fourth base, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Fast fourth base and looking to kind of turtle up on that. Remember, Serra was crazy greedy last game, and Classics decided, I can also be crazy greedy. Can he defend it, though? Two oracles, two adapts. Should be able to defend this. Forces the lasers to turn on. Runs away with the Zerglings. Well done there by Serral. Storm is on the way now. A couple of High Templar already warping in out here in the natural in the third. Still hasn't lost a single unit. Classics played a perfect game in that regard so far. Serral on 72 workers. He's got his plus one melee roach speed. Now Bailey Nest on the way as well. Double Robo starts for Classic. Man, Classic is the Robo King. I call him the Robo Kid, has a nice uh, ring to it. But when a man won his first championship almost a decade ago, uh, in terms of GSL championship, kind of hard to call him a kid. Probably not the most fitting for a man that's done his military service and has been competing in StarCraft for like 15 years. Overseer coming on into the main, gonna get a good scout off. I wonder if he builds immortals. I wouldn't mind Immortals with Psystorm. You don't really need to rush the Colossi Disruptor to start. Getting a bit of uh, just meat on the front lines and anti-roach power could be very effective. Storm's not that good at dealing with Mass Roach, but it's very good at dealing with Ling Bane. And the Immortals kind of uh, round out that weak point. Yeah, there we go. An Observer and an Immortal coming out. Interesting that he's letting this uh, Overseer just perv on him. Normally it's Bronze League hero games that I'm casting where I see the Overseer just sitting in the base unanswered, but... Classic's very focused on instead scouting, denying creep spread. Spire's on the way. Interesting. Spire Hive. So it looks like he's going to go straight for Broodlords this game. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Pathogen Glands upgrade for the Infestors. And a second Evo Chamber, which is very important. So Serral is not going to stagnate on those upgrades this time around. Observer has to get pulled over. Overseer does finally get taken out. Okay, guys. At this point, hold on. Do we, do we have a no rush 20 rule? What's going on? 91 drones versus 81 probes. The only thing that's happened is light oracle adept harassment and nothing else. Uh, right now, both of these players are saying who can do their impression of the Monopoly man better? Who's, who's going to raise their monocle and say, hmm, you have to pay rent. They're, they're, they're just trying to be so greedy right now. Serral finally starts to get aggressive. Picks off a pylon and a battery. And uh, maybe gets a gateway as well. I don't think he wants to hang around. This doesn't feel like a committed push. It feels like he's basically just trying to distract Classic and keep him on the ropes a little bit. Classic's fifth base there. I guess not keep him on the ropes, but just give him things to think about is a better analogy. You need to actually put on some very heavy pressure to get him on the ropes. Um, this is this is kind of light. Just run around, see, sh show you something, see how you react, see if you can distract you. Meanwhile, Greater Spire, plus two melee, Adrenal Glands, all that stuff's on the way. Those Zerglings... Having a bit of identity crisis as they try to jump off the cliff and realize they can't swim. 90 drones. Spine crawlers behind the mineral lines are always very effective because zealots coming into the mineral line will get stuck in between the minerals trying to get at those spines. So it's always really nice to build these like kind of behind the mineral spine crawlers wherever you can just to make it hard for A move zealots to do their job. Forces your opponent to do a lot more micro to get the value. Stalker Arc on High Templar coming in. Baneling's trying to flag on the High Templar, but all the High Templars survive. A couple of the Immortals go down. More Banelings, watch out! The Banelings find the heart of the High Templar. Only one High Templar survives. Good catch there by several. Units lost at 5,300 to 3,900 in favor, of course, of Classic. But with only one Storm left and an army of 30 Blink Stalkers. Ooh, he's got two Archons and an High Templar to deal with the Zerglings, but he needs to use those units correctly, and he's only got one Storm. Here we go, lots of Lings coming in, great storm to start. The Archons are getting surrounded though. The High Templar does get picked into the Prism. It will have another one available soon. He's going for a mass blink all in. He's going to try and wipe Serral out with a 2-0 right here, right now. Serral is down in supply right now. 
But the Banelings, the Ravagers trying to hold the random spine crawler has ran forward. He's bringing spine crawlers from his bases. That's how desperate Serral is right now. He's marching them to the front line. A new storm comes in. But it looks like Classic's going to back off. He's probing his fifth base. He's on 85 workers. He actually did take a good fight. I thought this was just going to be a greedy gentleman's agreement game. But it looks like he does back off. A few stalkers left on the front line. That's a mistake. Classic does not realize those are there, I'm pretty sure. Pulls him back now. Serral so trying to chase maybe a little bit ambitious. Ling's running around the right side. A few zealots will warp in to deal with that. Charge never got made in this game. Seems like Classic is not a big believer in charge. And those Lings. Oh, if they got a High Templar, that'd be sick. Oh, they got a High Templar and two probes. Nicely done. Units lost to about 2,000 in favor right now of Classic. Classic donates an immortal to help. He says, I feel bad for you, Zergs, you lesser privileged dirty bugs. Just accidentally rallies an immortal to the front. Broodlord's coming in. He's going to go Hydrogen as well. Serral is so worried about the ground-pounding power of this army that he wants Lurkers to back up his Broodlords. I would generally just focus on Infestors if I was him here because I think they're more multi-purpose. They're useful against the air units as well as the ground. Whereas the Lurkers, of course, only deal with the ground army. But to each his own. Serral trying a bit of a different style. The Uko style. If, if he adds Ultralisks as well, Ultralisks and Lurkers... And Broodlords, everything to kill the Protoss ground units. That's where he goes full Uko. Here we go, Zealot drop in the main base right now. Oh, does warp in in range of the Spore Crawler. Has to cancel that and pull back a little bit. Classic dives the south. Though. I like this little, look at this little position. And yeah, the Broodlords are going to be annoying. Oh, you got to pull back to the high ground or you don't have, you don't have vision to recall. Okay, he starts pulling his Stalkers away a few at a time. Bit of a funny retreat here for Classic. Does take out seven drones in the main before getting cleaned up by the Zerglings. Few stalkers are left behind here by Classic, but there we go. It does save them at the last second. He's going to pull back right now. Three Tempests on the way. Tempests are amazing at sniping Broodlords from a distance. And then he cancels them and makes carriers. This is something I've noticed a lot in Classic's play recently. He did this against TY and Jis. And then he cancels the carriers and makes Tempests. Being indecisive with his capital ships is Classic's specialty. He did this versus TY in that mech game where TY killed all of his Tempests. And then he rebuilt carriers, and then they were 10 seconds from finishing, and then he canceled them all, and then he built Tempests. This time he went carrier, uh, Tempests, canceled them, built carriers, canceled them, built Tempests. So definitely, he's sometimes indecisive with those air units. Now, another way to say this is he's very intelligent. He's always thinking about what's the right one for this specific game in this scenario. He's not just blindly building one unit and playing like a baboon. Classic's trying to make sure he makes the correct units, but is maybe just a little too slow to figure out what those units are. Overlord will go down. It was taking a dump on this expansion. And it looks like Sarah will just take out a couple of Stalkers with those Cracklings. Three Stalkers for a few Zerglings. Not too bad. As it does cost the same amount of total resources uh, to build one Stalker as it does to build five Zerglings. Did I say five? Seven. Seven is the correct number. Ravagerling Bane trying to pull back. Gotta be careful. Size Storm's there. Bile's gonna try to hold him back. There's only nine Broodlords right now. There are four Infestors out. Pathogen Glands is making, but uh, isn't going to be ready for the first round of Infestors. Ling's on the top trying to deal with these Stalkers. Stalkers on their own, not much of a match for it. Zealots in the main base. That could be very effective. I love the Zealots in the main base right now. Looking great. Down here in the bottom, the Stalkers bouncing around. Broodlords trying to chase after them. Fungal does land on a few of these Stalkers in the Adepts. We'll see how this goes. Those Stalkers do get caught, but look at this. Zealots in the bottom as well. Classic getting his activity rate up very high. Queens need to deal with that. War Prism Zealots on this base trying to take out the Hatchery. I think it'll be saved just barely in time. Main base Prism does go down. Army in the bottom stumbles into the Broodlords and gets absolutely trucked. Not very good there for Classic. Classic's got to pull this army back or these Broodlords are going to have some tasty treats. Zealots in the bottom left get cleaned up as well. These units pulling away also. Ooh-wee. Mass cannon on the top base. Interesting for Classic. This base only has one cannon. I kind of feel like you're better off just building a lot of cannons here. This cannon positioning seems like he's trying to defend his base from his own base. This looks almost like he's trying to draw a, like a weird moustache or something, right? He's like, look at my moustache. Um, anyways, both players are playing very fast, so it's not like they're sitting there stroking their chins, thinking about every single thing. It's going to be seven Stargates for Classic. And this game might actually uh, slow down a little bit since it's going to the Sky Toss. We said I liked that last game because it was Broodlord and Fester. Uh, it was not Broodlord and Fester for Sky Toss, and it stayed very active. But now that there's Broodlord and Fester out, it kind of just forces the Protoss to disengage from those areas, to go into their own capital ships. If these Tempests can get in and focus down the Broodlords, that'll be great. But if not, 
it's going to be hard to find any inroads into the territory. And notice the Overlord and the Prism staring at each other right now. We'll see what gets sent down there to deal with it. Looks like a few Zerglings and a pack of Corruptors for now. A couple of Spine Crawlers and a Spore Crawler as well. That Prism not long for this world. It's going to fly past the Spore Crawler, but of course the Jellyfish coming over here. In the top though, nice little move forward. It's a very small army for Classic. I'd feel a little vulnerable having that on the map. Prism in the bottom left goes down. At the same time, Prism in the top left into the main base. Sniping the Hive is always a big target in these late game scenarios. Lurker Den's on the way. Air upgrades. Your Parasite just finished. Serral burrowing his drones. And the Corruptors yet again grabbing another Warp Prism. All right, guys, it's 16 minutes in. And even after all this fighting, which there's been a good amount of, the players are almost dead even in their units lost. And they're now starting to bank 3,000 minerals, 3,000 gas for Serral. 1,500 minerals, 4,000 gas for Classic. And Classic, ho, 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 ho. Classic just built a mama. That's right, guys. Classic decided to just invest 400 minerals, 400 gas, and 8 supply in a unit that has the damage output of 2 marines, the movement speed of a drunk SCV, and has abilities that almost never land. Um, as much as we make fun of the mothership for kind of being a big waste of money and supply, it can be useful if your opponent isn't expecting it. They don't have detection, number one, or number two, for recalling units into your opponent's main base killing the, the hive and the tech and then recalling home to a nexus that can be very effective as well but uh, i wouldn't be surprised if it just gets abducted and killed in this game oh classic's famous storm drop harass coming in in the late game it's one of his favorite moves he loves going in for these and oh that's the real target that's the real juicy right there oh 22 drones go down there's still a prism in the main as well he's got another high templar there it storms a single drone and that's about it the Corruptors and the Vipers chasing after it. Zealots are going to try to take out the hatchery. Serral barely saves it. These two prisms going to try and fly away. Just getting a sip of tea as it looks like we're strapping in for a very long game, guys. Going to have to preserve my voice for this one as it's not going to finish anytime soon. Zealots get a queen and almost get a spine crawler but definitely a positive trade for Serral. And little trades like that being positive are more important than anything else. I think map control and momentum are not as important in these games unless you're mining out central bases. Like right now, Classic's got one central base. If he can mine that out and this base, or maybe this middle base down here, he'll get a very tangible mining advantage in the super long term. Outside of anything that secures that sort of tangible advantage, it's all about units lost. And that's why we're going to constantly check in in this units lost tab 18,000 for Serral, almost 20,000 lost for Classic. Does another Storm Drop. He's still got these two Prisms alive. I can't believe they are still alive. What Prism speed's pretty good. Queens get caught by the Zealots. Oh, Serral! He's going to actually lose two Spines, but his Queens all survive. They can unburrow later. Cleans up eight Zealots. Very efficient. Loses 200 Minerals. I guess plus the Drones, so you could say 300 Minerals. But for like seven Zealots, that's obviously 700 Minerals. So very positive trades on that defense. The Creep here are going to try and set up an ambush. Watch out. <clears throat> Let's put that T down before I start excitedly shake, uh, shouting. Colossus, or sorry, Corruptor does clean up the Warp Prism High Templar in the back. Gonna start doing the, the most amazing, powerful attack harassment of all time. Zealots coming on the north. They get cleaned up one more time. Keep in mind, guys, plus two Plasma Shields is making. So now that he's going air, I do like that Classic's remembering those upgrades. He storms a single drone. <laughs> it's a 14 kill High Templar. And a uh, few Roaches are gonna, of course, deal with that High Templar. Spore Crawlers here do pull back for now. Man, who's winning right now? I, I don't know. Um, there's only nine Broodlords to deal with the ground army. I'd say that's the fragile part of Serral's army, is if he gets a few of those Broodlords picked off, where Classic kind of surprises him, initiates a fight, the Tempest's like, bam, bam, bam. And if he's down to just four or five Broodlords, a bunch of Archons and Mortals and High Templar can kind of just roll through on the ground. And if you're there storming the Corruptors and dealing with them, 17 Corruptors is already not that many, then the Carriers can do their work. That being said, there's only three Carriers for now. He's still building two Prisms at a time is classic. He's starting to throw probes away, realizing he needs more army supply. 96 probes is way too many. And it seems like both players understand that this late game scenario is usually about whoever gets more impatient starts to throw units away and take worse trades. So look at the bank, guys. It's 20 minutes. Remember how greedy they were at the start? That They've traded pretty big armies on each other. And despite that, 
Classic is at 18,000 combined bank. Serral's at about 14 or 15,000. The combined bank between the two players is about 33,000 if my math counts up. Obviously, the numbers keep going up as well. They're not losing or rebuilding many units. So at this point, it's hilarious how much money is in the bank. And uh, if that goes for long enough, who knows? Maybe we set some record for biggest bank of all time in a pro match. I don't know if anyone's ever looked at that number. But these two are playing such a big macro game. Definitely feels like it could be a contender. Two drones do get picked off. And oh, does a nice little storm and a feedback. Uh, gets a few lava and a couple drones. But units lost wise, that's that's a favorable trade for Serral. If Serral can lose... Yeah, if you get rid of a few hatcheries, it could be a problem for Serral. The lava don't die, but you can't select them from a hatchery now. You have to go there and box or control click the lava to build off them. And you will sometimes see Zerg players forget that or lose track of that once they lose all of their hatcheries. Attacking in the south, he wants to take advantage. The distraction in the main is not going to be cost efficient in of itself. Oh, and neither is here. Nice fungal spine spore defense. That gets cleaned up as well. Serral tries to corrosive bile. The warp prism ends up biling his own hive instead. And uh, Classic still being as annoying as he possibly can says, let's still look for mistakes. Let's look for these openings. I think the Zealots could actually potentially fight the Roach Ravager if he gets enough of them. He's only got 10 gateways though. Killed the Hive, remember? No, he didn't actually. The Hive's still alive. Serral is trying to build a backup Hive. <laughs> Preparing for the potential uh, loss of the other Hive. Very smart. I mean, you're like, hey, Classic's wasting a ton of money trying to kill this. Let's do it. Now, at this point, you really should just have a Corruptor hunting this down. And you, you got to ask yourself, why is Serral so stupid that he hasn't sent a Corruptor? Guess what, guys? I think it's on purpose. I think he's realizing that Classic's going to keep wasting money warping units in and as long as he feels like these trades are positive he wants to almost incentivize classic to keep doing it at this point with two prisms on the map he's like okay that's enough let's just go clean those up for now and another one comes in a storm drop but it only gets a few workers only three drones are you gonna look at this you're like oh okay he cleans up but look at his units lost he's now seven thousand resources ahead of the units lost and don't get me wrong part of this is classic overbuilt probes so he's throwing them away now and a few thousand resources will not decide the end of the game but it is starting to stack up in Serral's favor in terms of that efficiency. Spinecrawl is here as well. Now, Serral's mobile army is still pretty small. Five roaches, four ravages, 12 zerglings. But it seems to be enough to uh, deal with all of this and trade pretty well. Plus three shields, plus three air armor. Going to be finishing up soon, as well as a dark shrine on the way for classic. Broodlord's going to try and siege the bottom. Mama is there. Now, remember, guys, Mama did not die yet this game. But 13 war prisms have died. And once again, zealots run in and die. So right now, guys, Serral is playing what we call the Girl Scout Zerg style of late game ZVP. Where basically, he's just setting up here on your on your doorstep of Protoss, and he's saying, excuse me, I'm selling cookies. I got brownies, cookies. Would you like to make a donation so we can build a new Girl Scout, you know, little thing? Oh! He actually biles his own Ravager there. Okay, he decides to to also give a donation of his own. But to be honest, I think he's okay as long as he doesn't take any more big storms on his workers. Every one of these prisms is 250 minerals. The High Templar, 150 gas and 50 minerals each. He's like, yeah, I'll I'll take some kills, no worries. I'm gonna lose a few drones there, it's kind of annoying, but it's five drones for an Archon. That's a positive trade for you, especially because, actually, I don't know what will be more important in the long run, gas or minerals. I do think it's usually Protoss gas. For Zerg, it could end up either way, depending on how the late game goes. Usually gas is more valuable. There are rare cases where that's not the case, but uh, Zerg, can transfer minerals into gas kind of by making mass queen for transfuse later on as well anyways lingbane roach ravager rolling in on this base depowering another artosis pylon goes down and oh a lot of probes getting taken out tempest and carriers are nearby so you're not going to lose the base i don't think and sarah realizes that and does back off we've got more zealots warping in war prism number 14 in the back door right now dark templar coming in as well he is actually killing all the hatcheries you know there's a point where all this inefficiency can pay off if you kill all the tech start killing all the hatcheries like i said the lava can start to disappear the, the the game can get messy enough you can force mistakes it's coming at a big direct resource cost but we'll see if that lasts in the long term storming those units doesn't do anything the archon goes down the dark templar go down serral is trading far better classic also loses an oracle and look at this uh, Serral's even pulling back Sporecrawlers. He's trying to be so efficient in this game. 
This bottom base for Classic is also a wide open target for these Cracklings, guys. Remember, they've been smoking crack all morning. They are ready to dive! They, they're holding their claws sideways. They're like, I'm gonna shoot your face off! Yeah, we're gonna do a run-by shooting here! Um, they run past in their imaginary car. You definitely need to be inebriated to think that's a good way of hiding your identity. But they do take out 11 probes. Great Aspire is going to go down in the main. Not bad here for Classic Man. Does take out the Great Aspire. Oh, ah, okay, that goes down. Carriers and Mothership still alive in the bottom. Going to rebuild the Nexus. Killing the Great Aspire could be effective. 3-3 three, three upgrades are already made. Spawning Pool looks like it's going to go down, but the Transfuse at the last second. Dropping some Band-Aids on that Spawning Pool. And a new one is building just in case. Definitely feels like if Classic wants to make this style work, he could. But I think he needs to be a bit more active with his army and maybe have a little bit more supply committed to these armies because it is still just a handful of Zerglings and Roaches, right? I kind of feel like if at one point he rocks up on the top with like three Archons and 15 Zealots, he can run in and kill a few bases. Another Storm Drop comes in, another Dark Templar drop. Classic's keeping this actually very interesting with his mass prism harass. He's lost 15 Warp Prisms in this game and still has two on the map. Lurkadens next on the menu. Dude, Classic is an absolute savage. He's he's playing a bizarre and unique style of late game. Please finish the Lurker Den. Bailey Ness barely goes down. The Lurker Den bleeds out on its own. He leaves it bleeding on the battlefield. Comes out screaming. He says, don't finish him. Let him burn. That was some real savage. There's some, there's some bad blood between late game Protoss and Zerg. Anyone who played in the Protoss uh, Void Ray meta, I think has, has definitely got hatred from the... Uh, the, the, the Zerg side, but I think a lot of Protoss have hatred from the 2018 era when uh, Serral just could not lose late game with his, uh, what is it, 26 range Broodlords or whatever it was? <laughs> it was like 12 range or something. He had the little trick where if you target fired and stutter stepped backwards, your Broodlords could shoot further than they normally could. There was like a weird behavior with the way the Broodlings leashed to the Broodlords to get patched out of the game. Uh, Zealots trying to take out these spine crawlers. They will go down, but the Zerglings are plus 3-3 three, three Adrenal Zerglings. For those who don't know, uh, Zealots do very well versus Zerglings in a lot of scenarios. But once you get 3-3 three, three in Adrenal, the Zerglings actually smash unless the Zealots are in very big numbers where they're in like a really big tight formation. But whenever they get surrounded, the Zerglings absolutely annihilate. Nice surround there going after the pylon and the battery there for Serral. He's looking for some more good trades. He's up 11,000 resources in the units lost, and that's it getting better and better for him. I do worry, though. He's got a lot of army in Hydras, Roaches, Ravages, Lings. His actual army is still just 9 Broodlords, 21 Corruptors, 6 Infestors, 2 Vipers. That's what's going to matter when push comes to shove. Classic going for another hatchery sniped. He has sniped 5 hatcheries, a lair, about to be 6 hatcheries in this game. Cancels another one in the top as well. He's stopping Serral from expanding. The problem I have is that Serral's still mining out the middle base. He's eventually going to long distance mine and rebuild these other hatcheries. Another hatchery cancelled there. And uh, as long as he eventually mines this base or this base and gets equal mining on the map, it's not too bad for him. Serral is playing the patient late game. Guys, let's do a bank check. 20, uh, was that? 23,000 resources for Serral in the bank. 24,500. Guys, we've passed the 45,000 resources combined bank point. That's right. Over 45,000. You guys can let me know in chat if we get to 50,000. If this hits 50,000, that's crazy. If we even get to like 48, 49, that's kind of insane. Because there's actually a fair amount of fighting going on. But the banks are crazy, man. 11,000 resources lost advantage for Serral. Serral staying active. Ling Lurk are going to do a backstabby. And they're going to look very good there. He's going to start to just tear down those buildings. Ooh, income tab is still... Half decent. It's not a massive amount of income. So I worry we may have already gone past the maximum bank point in this game, guys. Was there a bigger bank earlier? If there was, let me know. But uh, I'm <laughs> really keen to see what happens. A few disruptors and a carrier come in. Actually, he cancels the carrier and starts a Tempest. I love Classic's capital ship indecision. Do you guys think he just presses the wrong hotkey? Because it, it's surprising to me that someone could so often build a unit and then instantly change their mind and build a different unit. To me, it feels like maybe Classic is getting his hotkeys confused. I'm not sure. All right. Borrowed Zergling does go down. Going to clear up these overlords. Both players are going to try and take each other's bases just below there. Oracle Zealot coming in. Classic with the Oracle lasers. Going to do pretty well. Gets rid of one of the lurkers. The other one's very damaged but still alive. Zerglings do get surrounded. Or Zealots do, sorry. And probes transfer into that top base right now. The Ling's coming in. More Zealots warping in right now for Classic. 
Bank is sitting at about 45,000 combined. <laughs> uh, 45,000 resources, and there's still a few bases left to mine. Let's go. If you're classic, how do you win this game? I think if you're either player, how do you win this game, chat? I think we're clearly seeing Serral's just saying, I will be more patient than you and take better trades. And Classic's the one who feels like he has to finish the game. And because of that, he's losing the game in terms of units lost, right? He is objectively losing the game in terms of that. Keep in mind, though, it is mostly minerals. It it, it might not matter, but he's got to be careful because I think he's spending so much minerals on this that he might end up with a gas bank and no way to spend it. Like, maybe not even enough minerals to make Archons the longer this goes. Like, Classic is keeping Serral hatchery countdown a little bit. Serral's still got good lava. It really comes down to the air battles. And with those, it's a picking and a picking and a poking and prodding at each other that we haven't seen. Neither player has actually committed to an air versus air battle. And normally, it's about who can micro those better. I have no idea who's better in that scenario. And I do feel, though, Classic looks like the, the more impatient player. The player who doesn't just want to sit there. Oh, minus 400, minus 400. Mm -mm. Mother short, Mama number one goes down. She drops a double time warp, much like evacuating your bowels uh, when you are about to leave this world. That's the thing the, uh, the mothership usually does before she goes down. It doesn't achieve anything. It just kind of leaves a funny smell. It makes everyone go, ugh. And then they, uh, they kind of walk away. He's going to rebuild her. Interesting choice for classic there. All right, guys, that is 11 carriers right there. 11 carriers coming in. They do cancel this hatchery. Classic's mining more than Serral right now. That can add up. That definitely can add up. And you got to realize, like, what if you lose these drones and you don't have money to rebuild? That was a dumb joke, guys. It's a dumb joke because there's 50,000 resources in the bank pretty much at all times this game. A couple of oracles and tempests get abducted very nicely done there by Serral. Remember, um, winning a game like this, it's all about slowly shaving your opponent down <clears throat> and making sure you don't expose yourself to getting caught out of position and wiped in one big engagement. I do think the motherships are a complete waste of money against a guy as good as Serral. The war prisms are still going. That was war prism number 18. He's building number 19 and 20. He canceled number 20. He says, no, just one should be good enough, actually. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, there's already one up here as well. <clears throat> I mean, I like that Classic's keeping the activity level up, but I think he went too heavily into the air to really make this work. I feel like he needs to find fights with a main army as well. He can't just be trading zealots for buildings because it is simply not efficient. He another building here, another building there. I think he finished a spawning pool. Serral's building another one. He already has a backup spawning pool. So he's building like his third or fourth spawning pool this game. Um, this is absolute silliness. I love it. I absolutely love it, man. Classic's going to try and take out the base in the bottom. Serral is literally just playing the most patient. Like, if you take a step back and think about this from Classic's point of view, you've got to say, he's not really making any plays. Serral's just waiting for me to screw up. Now, maybe there's a confidence issue in the late game. Serral's more confident Serral, and Classic's not. I, I, I don't know, man. I've seen Serral lose late game PVZs. Um... I just don't think Classic's setting himself up for it if he's so panicked about, I need to win the game right now. Gets a Disruptor. Oh, sorry. Gets an, a Disruptor shot on an Infester, but he does lose it. Ooh, Tempest and the Oracle go down. Nice fungal catches there from Serral. Serral does lose this hatchery yet again. Classic's doing everything he can to keep Serral on the back foot. It's allowing him to mine this base, and he's trying to long distance mine this one. You know what? I think losing all these units, being 15,000 resources behind, is totally worth it for Classic. If... He can mine this full base out and not let Serral get any more mining there. But Serral comes in, kills all of his long-distance probes. Three Zealots run into the natural right now. Lurkers are going to keep that one secure. He's going from 12 to 14 carriers. 14 carriers, guys. Holy crud. I mean, they can get out of control really fast. On the other hand, there's 27 Corruptors. Now, remember, carriers are 6 supply. I'm not good at numbers. 14 times 6 is a pretty big number. I'm going to say 84, I believe. Uh, and the Corruptors are only 2 supply, so 27 times 2 is 54. So that's a 30 supply difference in that altercation, which means if it goes bad for Classic and the Corruptors manage to clean all those carriers up, they have been insanely efficient, and, and Serral will crush the game. So well, how do you avoid that happening? Storm. You need to land Storms on the Corruptors. You need to feed back the Spellcasters. 
Otherwise, your carry is going to have trouble. But if your carriers are fighting anything that isn't the Corruptors, they're going to slay. They're going to kill the Broodlords, the Lurkers, anything else in a matter of seconds. Serral's almost out of lava as well. Building all these lings is expensive. The Lurkers are going to cleanse through, though. There is still an Artosis pile on there. He didn't focus on it this time, but it doesn't matter because Cracklings are cracked, mate. Does get rid of a few of these probes. I'm surprised he ran away with the Lurkers. I think he could have got so many probes. Those are actually the last 11 workers of Protoss right now. And he's actually going to deny this base. This is a huge play for Serral. I thought it looked like Classic was hands down going to secure all the mining on this base. And yet now there's still uh, 1,600 gas on each geyser. There's thousands of minerals left. Classic is down almost 20,000 resources in the units lost. Let's check. He's lost 20 warp prisms. I don't know if I've ever seen a 20 Warp Prism game. This is one of those games. I think it had the biggest bank of all time with combined bank. I believe it peaked at about 48,000. I might say 50,000 for like the thumbnail for this or something like that if we end up if we end up putting this on YouTube, which I'm sure we will because it's pretty funny. Um, but I actually think the 20 Warp Prisms might be more of a record. I don't know if I've ever seen the 20 Warp Prisms, guys. Unit tab up here. Ooh, yeah, there's not much production going on. Serral's trying to rebuild a hive and a couple of spires and lurker dens down the bottom, which is where mo most of his expenses are just rebuilding tech. But the units tab is probably the most important. One lurker gets shot down. Classic's trying to reestablish this base in the top, but it's completely undefended. And that's a pretty big mistake, in my opinion. The moment those zerglings, zel uh, zerglings come in, he's in big trouble. He needs a few archons to defend that. The zerglings are going to overwhelm. The zealots realize that. They try to run away. These are the last probes of Classic. Pulls back to the cannons and cancels the Nexus. Serral's going to try to retake that hatchery. He's also got changelings down the bottom. He's trying to respread his creep a little bit. Serral has been playing Sponge Zerg right now. <clears throat> Much like SpongeBob, it's a sort of uh, jovial Zerg that just sits there trying to hang out under the ocean and slowly absorb the tides of Protoss. And at a 20,000 resource advantage in the units lost, 7,000 resources extra mineral in the bank. 1,500 extra gas. It's working out, man. It's working out. He's he's ahead. He's winning this game right now in the units lost. And Classic is doing what I call the Mad Dog Maneuver. Now, the Mad Dog Maneuver is where you go for 17 carriers. <clears throat> I'm not good at numbers, guys. But 17 times 6, I believe, is a number that brings us to... Is that like 100 supply? It's like 102 supply or something of... Uh, of carriers. <laughs> Tempests aren't very useful, unfortunately. They're kind of a waste of supply, unless you can pick off units from away and then disengage. Oracles for Revelation. Uh, Mama's in the mix because, I guess, she just wants to supervise the kids and we're awkwardly agreeing to it. Oh, Stormdrop comes in and gets cleaned up by Lurkers. That was a little awkward for Classic there. 108 supply of carriers, according to Twitch chat. Second disruptor is going to come out. So there will be a few disruptors. Their goal is to try and drop balls on the slugs. Now, obviously, guys, if you're playing StarCraft, you're a Protoss player, it's a really good idea. If you can land the balls on the slugs, it's a very good strategy. Now, if you're trying that in any non-StarCraft real-life setting where you're trying to put your balls on slugs, probably not advisable. And um, you'll end up in the doctor's office or the emergency room. So don't try it, guys. You never know what toxic things are going on. And uh, I also don't know why you'd ever want to do that in the first place. Anyways... Uh, massive carrier army. It, it keeps getting held back by the creep. I feel like Serral's got too much vision with the creep. It's kind of giving him too much knowledge of what's going on, guys. Twitch chat's gone and corrected. They've said 102 was right. Pig was right. Never trust Twitch chat unless they're saying you're right. Thank you, Twitch chat. I was right on the numbers. I've gotten so good at doing maths on stream, man. I used to be really bad at it, but now I count numbers good on stream. If I have to do anything other than basic addition or subtraction, it doesn't work, but I can add numbers good. So I've developed as a streamer, as a content creator, as a YouTuber. Go and ask any other person to uh, to do numbers while they're casting. And uh, usually it's a pretty fun experience. Okay, so Serral's going to start looking for some more pickoffs. Now you got to watch the High Templar's job is to zone out the Vipers and Infestors. Ball, 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 ball. Doesn't land. Good pullback by Serral. Feedback lands, but fungal lands as well. Oh, big fungal! 
Big fungal. Cyril goes in with some big juicy fungals. He drops a parasitic bomb. The High Templar are getting picked off by the Broodlords. Another parasitic bomb chains it. He's done massive wombo combos. Classics army is going to D-Town. Mama gets abducted in and one shot by the Corruptors. And that was a disastrous trade for Classic, who is now 19,000 resources behind in the units lost. A very good trade for Cyril. Cyril's bank is looking fat and happy. And it is Cyril who's also mining out that base. Classic's not really establishing any mining here. I love that there's these two bases that are so hard for either player to contest in this game. Mum is going to get rebuilt because he says, we need the moral support. If Mum isn't watching my StarCraft game, then what am I even playing for? Classic wants to go to minus 1200, 1200. And I admire it. The man just decided that's his strategy. He's going to do it. Void Ray's being added in. Void Ray's very good at fighting Corruptors. They will be so vastly outnumbered, though. Oh, nice fungal catch. Watch out for the High Templar comes forward. Dies to the Broodlords. Oh, oh, the Oracles and the Tempest getting taken out. Great pickoffs there. But of course, as soon as Psystorm lands, Cyril backs away. So many units with the Carriers and the Broodlords just spawning hundreds of small units. I am regretting uh, doing this game in 4K rather than 1440p or some lower setting, guys. I should have lowered the bitrate a little bit or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Okay, Storm, Storm does go in. Does pick off a Corruptor. That's the sort of trade you can do as Classic. Pick off with the Tempest, bait them into Storms. Pick off with the Tempest, bait the, the bait them into the Storm. He's got to keep doing that, and he's got to do it very efficiently. The problem is he has very little room for error now. He has to trade massively cost-efficiently because of the massive amount of Prisms, High Templar, and everything else he's thrown away this game. Especially Zealots. Um, I haven't really been paying attention to the Zealots killed. I'm guessing it's about 300. Let's Maybe not 300. Let's say 200. 187. Very close. Very close on that. 33 High Templar. 22 Warp Prisms. No carriers have died this game. Meanwhile, for Cyril, what has he lost? It's almost all drones and buildings. Right? He hasn't lost that many units. Like a few Broodlords, a few Infestors, a bunch of Roaches, Banelings, a lot of Zerglings have gone down. He hasn't really lost, like, that many core units. There's just lots of hatcheries and spore crawlers and a few tech structures. He's lost two greatest fires this game. <laughs> Sarah lost two greatest fires this game. That's really funny. That's actually hilarious. This is his third greatest fire down here. Mama uh, 3.0 has rejoined the front line. I think Sarah's trying to bait Classic into a bad fight. Look at it. Look at how he's sitting here. He's like, come on. You know you want to. Classic has six probes and a nexus going up. He's going to try and long-distance mine. Cyril's like, dude, I've got this base. I'm kind of content. I would like to deny this base, but only if I have the chance. Changeling's going into Spy. Classic, you can't let those Changelings watch you. Massive vision advantage. Classic screws up. Wombo combo lands. Mama gets abducted for the third time. Classic desperately trying to spread, but that is a vicious fungal infection. Oh my god, have you not washed your toes in a long time? Where have you been showering barefoot, Classic? Cyril comes in, gets a carrier as well, abducts another carrier. Oh, he's in the driver's seat now. He is the big daddy in this game. The Broodlords throw a wave out as well. Very nicely played. Cyril, look at that unit's lost. I have 25,000 resources. Five uh, advantage in the resources uh, lost. Classic is almost out of bank. Cyril has got 18,000 resources he's sitting on, and he's still doing Ling backstabs as well. Five Void Rays being built at a time. Classic is going to go to eight Void Rays. Will they be able to hold their own against 49 Corruptors? Man has 100 supply of 3 3 Corruptors. Guys, that is a lot of jellyfish. I'm telling you, that is going to electrocute you right in your, ho your hoochie. That is going to make you feel all sorts of jiggly things. If they all unzip their fly and pee on a Nexus, it will disappear almost instantly. That is wild. That is a lot of Corruptors, man. Um, maybe not as impressive as I think it was Sue in the 2018 World Championship BlizzCon group stage. I believe uh, we were playing that in Korea. Sue got into a, a late game situation against a Protoss and he went mass corrupted. Do you know what he did, guys? Actually, it might have been versus Terran now that memory serves. He had 52 corruptors and he had them for over 15 minutes and never got more than plus two air attack. No armor, no plus three air attack. <laughs> One of the most painful games of StarCraft to ever cast. We're like, this is Sue's first time ever past Lair Tech and we're wondering if he knows that these upgrades even exist. Apparently he didn't. Sue's a bit of a roach boy, likes to win in the mid game. These guys are a bit better at getting those upgrades. Mothership number four, out of money. His last dime. Don't, tell, don't let anyone tell you Classic is not a good son. 
Don't let anyone tell you that Classic is not a good sign. He will spend his last dime to get Mama in here. Oh, another double abduct. Good storms, and one or two of the Corruptors die to the Carrier Tempest Fire, but a couple of Carriers go down. And look, even a Void Ray goes down as well. Oh. Interestingly, Classic never made Flux Veins, from what I can see in this production tab. Maybe not wanting to bother having those units fly too far ahead of his army. How many? So there's 13 carriers, 7 Void Rays, Mass Archon coming in now. Classic spending his last gas bank. But Serral, it feels like, has just sandpapered him down. 28,000 resource lost advantage. And uh, yeah, it really feels like Serral's just playing slow, patient play. And he's just sitting there and saying, I know I can outlast you. You know, this is some tantric ZVP, guys. It's where you say, I'm just going to do my breathing exercises and not blow my load, and you're going to absolutely start to, to, to get excited too early. Oh, nice storms going in as well as a few feedbacks. I think that was a decent trade for Classic there. A few more of those could be effective. Uh, few infestors, corruptors, and broodlords being rebuilt. 190 army supply versus 190. Random queen wanders forward and gets herself killed. Serral's got to catch the oracles. It's the revelation that you can see. This is Classic's vision. He sees where the army is. He should be storming that. Creep has been a problem, though. Does he not have detection right now? Oh, he doesn't. He's, he's got to use oracle revelation. So he's building observers, is Classic. But I feel like Serral respreading tumors this game is like kind of an unsung hero. Every time those creep tumors see where the Protoss army is, it just gives you the advantage of not being surprised. Classics like, screw shift clicking on five changelings. I'm just going to storm them for ease. Not a bad idea when you have a lot of High Templar. Revelation goes out and whiffs. It's feeling very blind right now. Mama's going to lead the charge. We've seen how that's gone in the past. Um, but who knows? Maybe she's going to pack some of that angry Karen energy. If she charges out the front and starts demanding to speak to the Zerg manager, I don't know how Cyril's going to handle that. Nine Archons. No Immortals left in the mix, just 5 High Templars, 7 Void Rays, 13 Carriers. The Tempests are going to try and bait him in. Notice that Classic's kind of spreading his army out. I think he basically wants to poke and prod with a few High Templar and Tempests, get Serral to run forward, and then he's going to do a big spready, a big A move, and just try to find some way to win the game. Uh, Classic has no probes. He has 197 army supply. He cannot rebuild probes. He has a random High Templar and a Zealot back there. Let's look at Serral's vision right now. You see he's got these changelings around the edges. His creep trim is there. He doesn't see where the army is, though. And he's just trying to avoid get, getting revelation on his army. He's hiding back here. If your Corruptor Viper comes from a surprising angle, like if he came from the top right now, he could grab a few units, get them, get out, without the feedbacks landing. We talked about being wasteful with Zealots and Warp Prisms earlier, and how it might end up with excess gas and not enough minerals in the bank. Classic balanced it pretty well to be fair so he hasn't had too much like it's not a it's not like he's got 3,000 gas 900 gas is not a crazy number to have in excess when you run out of minerals i actually feel like he kind of understood that quite well look at that abduct goodbye oracle chasing you gotta be careful classic you can't chase too far mate all right i think he's getting baited and i think this is it classic feels like he's got to do something Serral has been more patient all game. Serral right now is just staring at him like a block of wood saying, come on, deeper, deeper, deeper. Expose yourself. High Templar gets taken out for a few lings. Vipers are out of energy right now, which does kind of hurt Serral. He's got five of them, actually. Some of them must have energy then. Ooh, Broodlords take out another High Templar. Some of the brood. Oh, here we go. Big fight, big fight. Time Warp goes down. Serral's taking big damage on those Broodlords from the storm. And there's a few lurkers in there as well. Classic's going to try and chase it. Mama gets abducted again. Why am I not surprised? The lurker's doing some decent damage. The corruptors are going to go forwards on the north. Sorry, guys. The frame rate is dropping like crazy in this late game scenario. Corruptors focusing down the carriers as much as they can. The broodlord's trying to clear out the ground army. And oh me, oh my. That is a pretty damn big battle at the end of it. Who comes out on top? I gotta say, I think it's probably the guy that's rebuilding 24 Corruptors. There's no High Templar. It's just a handful of Tempests and Carriers. And even without the new Corruptors popping several times on top, he even shoves the tentacle in to add insult to injury and says, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Several ties up the series after 50 minutes of absolutely ridiculous play.
All right, all right, all right, guys. Sterile in the bottom right side of the map now. He's got a hatchery there, spawning pool going up there. He's being blocked by Classic this time. So Classic says, you know what, game three, you weren't expecting it. You haven't been doing 15 hatch. Let's go for the block and disrupt your build order. I think this is really good. Serral won't be as practiced with this recently because he loves his 15 hatch, 15 pool against players that he know, knows blocks a lot. And when he knows they don't block, he just gets away with a 16 hatchery. So who knows? Maybe Classic can chrono two adepts across the map. Maybe he can block the third base from building with a pylon and just kind of get a flow on effect of, uh, of more disruptions and harassment and everything going. Cybercore starts there. And second gas in a second pylon. Very standard solid build. Don't know what this probe's doing. What is Classic doing right now? Ah, he's hiding his second pylon. Okay. He's going to hide his uh, Stargate, I would assume it is. Could be a Twilight Council, but he's just trying to make it a little bit more difficult for Serral to see what's happening. Drones coming down. Probe is hanging here. Sees a few drones transferring out. Link speed has started for Serral. Four queens, uh, four links, two queens on the way. And indeed, it is just a Stargate in the back, so he's not doing anything too fancy. Just putting it in a little bit of a surprising position. Is he going to build a second Stargate later and do a two Stargate build? Is because the whole point is you always get it scouted in the main, but if he hides his Stargate here, then they don't see you're building like a Void Ray first, or they don't see that you're building, uh, you know, carriers, or you're doing a Tempest Rush, any one of the weird gimmicky builds. Who knows, Mass Oracle we haven't seen in a while, but I'm still waiting for that one to make a return. Because otherwise, the thing is, they normally don't scout in the main for the first Stargate anyway, so there's not that big of an advantage to do this unless it has a flow on effect. effect. Big thank you to Shut Your Traps watching live, gifting some subs in the channel. We're going to give you a massive thanks after this game. And if you guys are watching over on YouTube, while we're just in the early game downtime, please click the Patreon link down in the description below. Um, we don't do many shoutouts here on this channel. I like to give you guys the best commentary we can. Apologies for all the uh, banter in the last game. I hope you don't mind the the dumb dumb the dumb dumb jokes and silliness. But when the game does drag on like that one, I Try not to commentate every single bit of the action. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to go above me on su to support, especially if you know, most of us use adblock these days and those who don't, still only a couple of cents uh, that do trickle through from those ads, please click the Patreon and uh, hop on and support if you can uh, afford a couple bucks. If not, don't worry about it. Just being a part of the community, watching the videos, commenting, sharing, all does a lot to support the channel. So it's really been growing lately. I think we're almost at 20,000 subscribers. Who knows, maybe we hit it by the time this gets published. So, very exciting to see this channel kind of popping off and a lot of regular commenters there in the comment section starting to uh, grow the community. So it is indeed a Void Ray into Oracle opening, guys, but third and fourth gas before third Nexus. Now that third Nexus goes down at 410. That's a bit of a tell. Let's go to Serral's vision. Serral, he sees the third Nexus. He didn't fully scroll up and look at it. He, he barely got a glimpse of its hit point bar. So if he was paying close attention, he would have realized that it started after four minutes. Whereas a quicker one can go down at like 345. Because there's a Void Ray first, it always does slow things down. Void Ray already gets an Overlord and a drone. He's looking for another one. It's going to take a lot of damage for that. Oh, but I mean, a drone's valuable. Oh, Oracle gets intercepted by the Queens, but it gets on by. Great start. Very good start here for Classic. Five drones in total. The Oracle will take a bit of a beating though. Oh, has to run the gauntlet. Nice starter step from Serral. Gets a lot of hits on that. Lair and Roach Warren are on the way. Lots of droning coming in for Serral, trying to catch back up. As I said, second Stargate Fleet Beacon. Classic is pulling out a special PVZ build. He's going to go straight for a carrier. Oh me, oh my, Serral. You're up against something naughty. Now, to be fair, if you see a Void Ray as a Zerg, you see that slightly late third, you're immediately scratching your chin and going, what are you doing? Is it a big three base Glaive Adept timing? Is it just... It's probably not just a macro play, but sometimes it is. Occasionally, they they want you to panic and think it's something weird, and then it's not. Could technically be two Stargate as well. But two Stargate is kind of the rarest, I would say, of the follow-ups. And it's the one which hits the latest, so you're more worried about other things, which is why there's 11 Roaches and lots of Zergans. But he's doing a Queen Walk. Oh, he's doing a Queen Walk. Okay, the carriers aren't out yet. They're not going to have many Interceptors. They will pop in time. Will they be able to save the third base? I don't think they can save the third. I think Classic's going to lose this third base. He's got a battery, but it's out in the open. Way out in the open right now. That's going to go down real quick to the Ling Ravager. 
Classic does not seem to fully realize what's happening until now. He's still probing right now. He leaves his wall completely unmanned, which is a little bit of a chaotic move. Carrier's coming forward. Shield battery's looking okay. Battery overcharge has not gone down yet. I wouldn't mind him just using it as soon as they commit. Serral's dropping creep. The queen's trying to pull back. This is a weird position to be in for Serral right now because he's supply blocked on 114. He's trying to make more queens, but look at that. The Ravages are getting focused down. The Lings need to run into that base. Oh, it's full walled. Very nicely done with that full wall. Another Ravager goes down. Queen's getting transfused. That is not enough queens to fight these interceptors. But if he turns tail and runs, I don't know if he can get back to creep on time either. The Roach Ling coming in. Battery goes down. He's going to keep running back. Should Serral have just tried to man mode this? Should he have just tried to overwhelm the third? A part of me says, yeah, he should have. He's already committed so much to this. This did not work out for Serral in this game. Spire's on the way in the main base. He's going to go from four gases here, trying to go up to fifth gas. I think a sixth one will go down in a second. Down 10 drones versus a Protoss player. Two more carriers on the way as well as the Twilight Council. Classic planning, the Twilight Forge ground transition. Charge Archon for a big carrier. Archon Zealot timing attack could be good. Classic's also recently been experimenting with a blink follow-up, though. So we'll see if we get to see that this game. Nice circling surround for Serral. Not bad at all. Trying to distract these carriers. Keep them off his back until that spy is done. Notice he's building tons of overlords. He wants to build as many corruptors as possible. Block the carrier counterattack. And then he thinks he'll be okay. He's actually got 12 queens. So they might be able to defend four carriers on their own. Just barely. Especially if they bring a few spore crawlers to the front. He doesn't want to let the carriers get behind into the dead space where they can attack both sides. That would be very hard to deal with. Spire's done. Roach speed queens and roaches are on the way. Queens are dropping some nice transfusers right now. He's got to hold position. Serral, you do not want to be on A move in this scenario. You want to hold position those queens so that they don't chase after the carriers. Very good micro by Classic to try and bait the queens because the carriers have higher attack priority these days. The queens will try to chase after them which is, of course, way less efficient. Ling's pulling behind. We've got a fourth Nexus there as well. Five Corruptors are on the way. That's not enough to deal with six carriers. And he's still building carriers and Blink. Wait, what? Why would you go eight carriers with Blink? This doesn't make any sense, does it? I'd love your explanations in the comments. It feels like if you go a few carriers, force Corruptors swap into full ground, it makes sense. But to be investing in eight carriers, I feel like exposes him to just get encountered by Mass Corruptor. Like, if Serral gets 20 Corruptors out, dives, kills the carriers, he's back in this game. I think if Classic went sideways into, like, Blink, a, Blink Stalker Storm or Charge Archon Storm, something like that, I think it'd be a very uh, better... I think it would be a better transition. Maybe I'm just misjudging. Maybe because he feels so ahead after this good start, he thinks he can make this work. He's making Storm. He's got the High Templar morphed in. Storm will definitely back him up in a big way. I think if he was behind or even even, this is a, an insanely risky choice for Classic. But I think right now, Serral's only just got 15 Corruptors out. And 15 Corruptors is not really the best versus six carries. You kind of want a few more, especially with like batteries here and stuff. Overlord's coming in. Oh, that I was not expecting. Queen Ling Roach Corruptor timing. Classic, you're a bit far forward. Careful, mate. He does throw those Interceptors onto the uh, Corruptors. Should be just attacking these overlords. The problem is the overlords do allow the interceptors to launch nice and early. Storm's done in a few seconds. Storm is almost done. The queens are up front. Where are those corruptors? Corruptors are not finding the carriers right now. I don't know if you can you really just get rid of the interceptors? I guess with so many queens you can. It's a 14 queen timing here for Serral. Serral trying to dive in. He cops his first big storm. Second one lands mostly on the queens. The corruptors evade it, but there's two more storms where that's from. Lands on the queens, clips the corruptors just barely. The archons are morphing. Those corruptors have taken massive damage from the storms. He's going to take out a few of these carriers, but it looks like with the blink stalkers coming in with plus one, the archons, the storms whittling down the number. That corruptor count is gone. There's still four carriers in the skies. Roaches are very similar in numbers to the stalkers. But look at that, the Stalkers overwhelmed. Serral was all in here. He's down in Workers versus Protoss. His random Spore Krillers that he walked up here to try and root with this push do get pushed back. And even though he does have a sneaky protrusion uh, entering the base from underground, uh, that creep does not do damage. That creep gives vision, but he doesn't have the army to capitalize. Plus one range, his first Roach upgrade is just starting, whereas plus two is on the way and a Robo for Classic. Classic is no longer building carriers, and I think I agree with that. You've already got four out. That's a problem. That's forcing Serral to dump money into the Corruptors. And the Corruptors are very bad at doing anything other than killing carriers. 
So that's really the only spot where they actually perform well in this game. And uh, definitely an issue. Creepers spreading all around the map. We've got links going out the left, links going out the right as well. Ooh wee! Carriers are morphing. We've got the Robo going up. And it feels like Classic's out of the woods, out of the danger zone. He's still going to mix another carrier in, which is cute. Two carriers getting mixed in. He's just making it impossible for Serral to counter everything. He's like, I have a mix of ground units, splash damage spellcasters, and capital airships. Have fun dealing with all of that. Serral's looking for a snipe on these carriers as they pop out, but he can't even find the stargates. Those hidden stargates, so well placed. And those corruptors have to be careful. Unable to find a moment to unzip their fly and get the wee wee going. Serral's got to be careful. If you lose these corruptors, you're in the doo doo, mate. Still looking around. Serral's like, where are they? He has actually seen them. Oh, he unzips! Serral unzips! Oh, man. Like a Finnish man after a football game. Unzips in public and just goes for it right there. But does have to pause midstream. Much like he was frozen by the cold winter of Finland. And uh, does back away. Doesn't really get any damage. Loses a Corruptor. Serral's doing a good job of microing his heart out. But Roaches, Lings, Corruptors, these are not late game units. And even though Classic's deep on the Stalkers, like he's very heavy, 27 Stalkers, the Storm and the Carrier combo, this is like a pretty decent early late game army for Classic. Serral's army is a mid game force. It is a, I'm fighting you on layer tech and overwhelming you with much more supply. He does not have much more supply though. It's even supply. That's very bad for him. He's got 16 Corruptors, but only some of them on that left side. There we go. He's reinforcing, but he's being spotted. Classic knows about it. Nice Richling run by on the left, gonna deny Classic's fifth base, but the Stork is chasing after those Corruptors. The Corruptors only have plus one attack. Plus one attack also done for the Carriers. Drone's gonna evacuate. Good call here by Serral. He's actually catching a lot of these long distance mining probes. Bit of a mistake for Classic, but he is saying, I can just win the game right here, right now. Stalkers blinking forwards. High Templar looking for the Storms. Carriers marching in behind them. The Interceptors are pre-launched. You do not want to fight right now, Serral. You want to let those Interceptors go back into the Carriers before the Corruptors engage, if possible. Queens run forward. Bit of a mistake there for Serral. This is an impossible situation. The Goat right now is being cornered. Some say there's nothing more dangerous than an angry Goat. But right now, he does not have the tools. He actually goes on top and gets a Carrier. He gets another one. He might take out most of the Carriers. Biles landing as well. The Storms have blanketed his army, though. Still two Carriers standing at the end of the day. A massive of Stalkers overwhelming. Serral's Queen Walk strategy countered by Carriers. The last thing he expected... And Classic wins the series 2-1, to one, proving that this man, I believe he deserves that title of best PvZ in the world, if not best Protoss in the world right now.